There are a lot of enhancements to detailing in 2D and 3D in Creo Parametric 8.0. We will cover symbols in another video just because so much was done to that area. But let's take a look at a bunch of the other different enhancements in Creo 8. Probably the biggest one that I noticed was the update to the different sketching tools. If you ever had to sketch in a 2D drawing in Creo 7 going all the way back, like forever, yeah, it was kind of painful, it was kind of ugly, but they've updated the tools and the workflow. It's really easy and neat now. The first thing I want to point out before I start showing you how to use it is that there are a bunch more tools now. I actually had to go back and check but in Creo Parametric 7.0 and earlier, you had the ability to create lines. If you wanted a line or arc chain, you had to turn on like parametric sketching or something like that. Now you also have the ability to make a line tangent from any arc, circle, spline, or conic. Similarly with our arcs, back in the day, you used to have the ability to create a three-point tangent end arc or a center and ends arc now you have the tangent arc and also the concentric arc you didn't even have rectangles before now you have the four standard different kinds of rectangles that you can create in sketch mode and then let's see for circles back before you had the ability to create center and point circles now you have two point three point three tangent and concentric circles so a lot more easier functionality and again it aligns a lot more with sketch mode so if you're familiar with the sketching tools sketching in a 2d drawing will be much easier you have the other commands over here for like ellipse spline point chamfer fillet and edge but those are the same as before another thing to point out is that if you go to the settings drop down you have snapping settings and here we can snap to model geometry and instant snapping to geometry before when you went into a snapping tool it would open up like a snapping references dialog box you had to pick what you wanted to snap to and you had to turn on some other different option but now we just have some of these same different kinds of options like in sketching mode and we also have snapping guides and by default nine of these are turned on so you'll notice that these align with the different standard constraints that you have in sketch mode. And if you're getting too much snapping, you have the ability to turn these different ones off. As I hover over one of the different options, you can see from the tooltip that all these have a corresponding config.pro option available if you want to turn some of these different ones on or off from the get-go. So for example, I know for me, I probably would not use equal or perpendicular or parallel that much. However, these other ones I definitely would like. All right, so let's take a look at what happens when you start sketching. So for example, here I have this view down here and really the sketching tools are supposed to be used for a little bit of additional information that you're trying to convey in the drawing. They're used to maintain imported drawings, but sometimes you need to put in some additional information. For example, let's say that I want to denote a rectangle where I want a serial number placed or maybe some kind of label affixed. I can do that in here. Let's go to create a rectangle. And again, I've got the different types. Let's say I want to do a center rectangle. And so right now you can see that it is giving me these different dimensions based off of a zero zero location at the bottom of the screen and also as I move in here you can see that it's snapping over the different geometry what it means by instant snapping is that if you hover over one of the different entities then it's gonna sort of like remember that but really I don't want this dimensioned or locked in from this zero zero location which looks like it's even off of my sheet a little bit if you take a look, we have this toolbar that opens up. And so some of the different controls that you have in here is that you can define the geometry using Cartesian dimensions or polar dimensions. So for example, if you want to use a length and an angle, we also have the ability from this one. Let me 
get off of that geometry a little bit. It was snapping in there. So here we can move the dimension base point to another location in the space sky, I believe, where your mouse is at the moment. You can change the reference of the current dimension. Here we can move the dimension base point to a sketch origin. And here we can lock the base point position. And then from a drop down, here we can change the dimension orientation. The one that I've been finding myself using the most is this one to move the dimension base point to the sketch origin. So for example, I could say, hey, let's move it to like this location over here. And that way, as I'm creating this, it is snapping into that particular location in the model. Oops, did, I lost it. Let me do it again. And so here I'll just leave it hovering there for a second. And if I'm not moving the right mouse, you'll notice that the dimension that was in here automatically highlights so I can punch in the exact values that I want this to be. And that is good. And then let's left click and then I can create another entity in here as well. But I'm fine with that. Let's hit the middle mouse button to get out of that creation. So in that way, I was able to create these other additional sketched entities. If I bring open my drawing tree, you can see that we have our draft entities in here. And that's another way that I can access the lines that were created. In addition, you have the ability, if you create different entities, to turn them into construction entities. In a moment, I will go right to construction mode, but let's say that I start creating something. Let's say I'm going to make a single line, and as I'm doing it, I snap in over here and drag down all the way over here and let it snap into that location. That's good for this line, and then I realize, oh wait, I wanted this to be a construction line. Well, you can right mouse click and hold when it is selected and then choose construction. The keyboard shortcut is control G. And now we have a construction line over there. So now that I have this construction line in my model, hey, let's take a look at performing a mirror operation. I can click on mirror. And right now I'm being prompted to select the 2D entities that I want to mirror. Let's select the four lines and then click the OK button. Now I'm being prompted to select what I want to mirror about, and I will pick my construction line, and that way I have a rectangle over on the other side. Let's take a look, though, at creating construction entities from the get-go. You can change over to construction mode, and let's say that I want to create sort of like a bolt hole for the center of these four holes. Well, again, we have a number of different circle types, but I am going to choose center and point, and so I will let it lock into the center here, and then drag it out, and then let me snap into the center. Uh, oops, I already created that one. Didn't realize I'd created it. And so there I created the construction circle. You can see how it is appearing. I believe that is the phantom font. If I hold down the right mouse button, then we can go to line style. And instead of phantom font, I could say, hey, let's use the dash font instead. Apply and close out of there. And that way I have the circle looking the way that I want it to appear. Let's take a look at an enhancement for datum feature symbols. I will click on the command to create a datum feature symbol in the model. Let's select a surface and then drag it where we want. Then middle mouse click in order to locate it. I need to change the orientation, no problem. Click the OK button. Then now when I click on the datum feature symbol, we can click in the field for additional text and then when you click on the symbols drop down, we have all these other additional symbols available to us. I'll be honest, I don't know what a lot of these mean, but hey, we can add them to our symbol. You now have the ability to use advanced selection in order to select the semantic references for geometric tolerances. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have geometric tolerance. Let's say that I want to make a call out to a whole bunch of different services over here let me middle mouse click to locate my geometric characteristic i want to use profile of a surface let's change the orientation let's try rotating the text 180 
oh, let's try flipping the direction there we go that's the way that I want it to appear and if I go to this particular annotation that I just created I can click on references and it automatically has the selected surface reference as one of its different references but I actually want it to call out all the different surfaces inside of these little pockets if I were to click one by one that would be a lot of mouse clicks now you can go to surface sets and if you happen to know the various combinations using the shift key then you can use those different methods if you have trouble creating them hey you can always go to the details button which will open up the surface sets dialog box I will add another surface set I will pick an anchor surface and then I can use seed and boundary and for the bounding surfaces I can pick this surface hold down the control key and grab that surface and rotate and grab the one on the other side and in this way now I've got all those different pocket surfaces selected I can click the OK button and then you can see that we have seed and boundary in here click OK and that way all those are semantic references for this feature if you go to semantic query and say pick the geometric tolerance it highlights all the different references similarly when I am in semantic query if I pick a reference like let me grab this surface you'll notice that the geometric tolerance highlights as well the next enhancement is related to multi-body here is one of the demo models for multi-body in Creo Parametric 7.0 I have three different bodies there's body one it has a material assigned to it for steel then we have body three this one is a titanium alloy then we have another body which has aluminum assigned to it if I right click on any of these different bodies we can choose parameters in order to see the body level parameters and so in this particular case we have two different parameters PTC assigned material PTC reported material you can create any other parameters that you want at the body level for this particular object let's click the OK button out of here now you have the ability to create notes that have a call out that will retrieve a parameter from the selected body let me show you what I mean by that let's go to the annotate tab let me see Yep, the front annotation plane is what I want to use from the note command I can create a note with a leader and I will select this surface in the model and then middle mouse to locate then I will use ampersand and the name of one of those parameters I had PTC assigned material and then if you use a colon and then ATT underscore body that means go out to the body that this leader is attached to and grab the parameter called PTC assigned material and use it in this note and in that way here we're getting steel called out for this particular one let's repeat that I will select let me grab I'm trouble getting the surface there we go grab a surface and then middle mouse click and by the way I could have used an edge but I just have preference let's put in the same parameter and then colon ATT body and then click on the background of the screen now it's calling out the titanium alloy hey let's do that one more time in case you haven't gotten the point yet ampersand PTC assigned material colon ATT underscore body and this one we get our aluminum 6061 called out in another video I showed how you can embed components inside of an assembly for example if I select one of my off-the-shelf components and expand it you can see that we have a number of different embedded components in here and by default when we created a bill of materials the repeat region did not include any of the embedded components if you go to the repeat region command 
and then attributes and select a tables repeat region you'll notice down in the list of different attributes no embedded is selected by default but you could change it to include embedded and then if i hit done return well then we can see all the different embedded components for the different parts inside of here again i don't want to see that hey let's go back to attributes for this repeat region let's change to no embedded done return and where the heck is my table here we go and you can see now we're back to what i really would want to see in the bill of materials and the last enhancement to take a look at here i have a drawing that was created by importing a dxf if you take a look at the model tree you can see that there is no model associated with this drawing there's just a whole bunch of 2D entities on here. So for example, I have a bunch of lines, I have a bunch of circles, I have a bunch of arcs, and I have a bunch of different splines. You are able to take different entities and convert them into a drawing view. So in this particular case, hey, let me swipe a box over all these different entities and even use the control key and grab one more. If you go to the ribbon, you can see that we have a create draft view command and the keyboard shortcut is shift W and I'll select that. And now we have this draft view located in our tree. You can see that we have draft entities and hatches. Let's repeat that. Let me grab these entities. And once again, I can create a draft view. You can also do that from the right mouse button. Let's select that and select these different entities and create a draft view and let me do it one more time for this particular view up here and create the draft view and so in that way i'm able to convert these into entities that are associated to one another and you can even go to the properties of a view and change its type for example if you wanted something to be a projection view instead of a general view you have that ability furthermore if i take a, another view then i can go to its properties here we can see that it scales right now a scale of one for whatever reason let's say i wanted this scale to be bigger hey, i can change it to 1.5 click the ok button and now that view is even bigger than it was before I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolwindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.